Chris, Chris, let me know how you're going to feel about this. You ready? I am. Listen, Chris, uh, Ted, sir. Uh, I'm going to take you down. Oh, that my gosh. Funny. That was the most funny. Mark Murphy, is there anything you can't do? Ted, this is going to be good. I have a feeling he can't operate that camera. I, I think. Look, you're in focus. And, oh, I got your nose hairs. Wait. <laughs> yeah. <shot. laughs> Some of the very best baskets find their way into the best possible hands after hours. Mark, Alex, Chris, you're going to be creating an entree, which means you'll have 30 minutes from these seemingly unrelated ingredients, rack of lamb, mint julep, eggplant, and apple spice cake. So good news, bad news, not sure. Ted, I think that um, the number one problem with this basket, among many, is the rack of lamb. And we see chefs come on and struggle to get things cooked and rested and sliced and cut. People cook it whole, then at the last minute they look at the clock, they tack it up and right. throw it in the fryer. Throw so the this fryer. is a really good basket, I think, for us to have to deal with, because either we won't succeed and we'll prove once and for all that this can't be done, or we will hopefully offer some constructive ways to attack this big piece of animal in a way that gets you cooked food on the plate in 30 minutes. I have high hopes. Well said. I have high hopes in Alex and Mark. No. <laughs> um, and also, with this particular round of ingredients, judging it, salt. There was no salt on any of the lamb that we got. So mm -hmm. season, season, season. How should we season that? With authority. Ah, that's a wonderful idea. I think you should season it correctly. Can we just use the mint and drink the julep? If you're Jeffrey, you certainly, you probably would. <laughs> if you're Jeffrey, you would use the cup to present your lamb in and not use any of the contents. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay, well, I, I imagine you probably know that you have exactly 30 minutes to do this. Right. And I imagine you'll be unsurprised to learn that time starts now. Awesome. Oh, I was hoping. Hey. OK. Uh, Mr. Murphy, what are you up to now? I'm actually going to make uh, chops. You've got quite a medley of herbs Look at that. There. I used the mint from the mint julep, and I've got some thyme. I've got some rosemary. I forgot I wanted to take out the ice cubes real quick. I see. Thyme and rosemary, by out. the way. Thyme and rosemary, very traditional with lamb and very delicious. And here he's really going strong with the herbs, which I think is going to be wonderful. I'm taking that chop off because I'm not getting the right size. You threw that bone away. Why'd you throw the bone away? There's no meat on it. Now, are you pounding this to try to make them the same thickness? No, it's, 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 I'm just trying to get my frustrations out. No, I want to get them all the same size so that I mean, they're all going to cook the same size. Yay, Alex. What's going on with these bones? I'm going to do some breaded and fried bones, Ted. Look at you. Look at you taking the eye off of that rack of lamb. Yeah, I thought that'd be fun. That's what do crazy. You think? I like it, and I think it's different. And can you, Alex, can you talk about why is it that chefs in the chop, why is it that chefs in the chop kitchen are always trying to do something different from their opponents? I mean, I think that's how you can differentiate yourself. You might not have the best dish. But if you're the most creative with the basket ingredients, you're going to win. There you go. There you go. You know? Just focusing square on the basket, as always. All right, chefs, less than 20 minutes on the clock. Chris Hi, Santos, buddy. how are you, sir? Great. How are you? Chris right here showing us one of the greatest flavors, I think, in all of cooking, just the zest on the outside of a lemon. I'm going to do a classic move, chop move. Oh. Right, Ted. Wait, he just blew me off. Oh, that happens a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. Did Chris, is, is Chris ignoring you? Yep. Oh, you know how you know how he gets his feelings hurt. So you've got to get one of these little little zesters, little graters. Hit the just the outside of the lemon. Only take off the yellow part. And there are aromas in the skin of a lemon that are very different. I mean, that are that really amplify the the, oh, the flavor of the juice I'm inside. Sorry, I don't know. I'm hearing I'm hearing uh, Alex over there cursing. Everything all right over there, Alex? No. Alex broke the tomato basket. That what? I have been staring at for seven years. <laughs> oh, no. I Alex, deserve the... to break it. What are you doing swinging from the tomato basket, Gornichelle? I don't know. I'm getting I crazy. I don't know either. All righty. Carry on. Chris, what are you making here with this eggplant, Chris? Red chilies, uh, lemon, lemon olive sauce. oil. I'm actually going gonna to grate some of this garlic on there. And you got mint, you got frise, you got tomato, heirloom tomato, shallot. Beautiful stuff. Yeah, I'm going to try to make a salad, believe it or not. A salad with lamb on top. And then the apple spice spread as croutons, some uh, feta cheese to finish. Um, OK, well, let me get out of your hair for a second and let you think straight. 
<laughs> All right, chefs, you've got 15 minutes on the clock. Oh, no kidding. Whoa. That could have been dangerous. All right, so Alex, oh, anchove. Lamb with anchovy? Of course. People really misunderstand what anchovies should be used for. I think well, I like the anchovy oil. I think it's it's on that classic umami list, Ted. Right. You know what else is an underrated ingredient? Water. A little bit of water. Yeah, I hear you. And uh, I see, of course, your old favorite mustard, some thyme, jalapeno. You going spicy? No, I want to get a little bit of jalapeno in with some sections of tomato, Ted, for like that kind of fresh, juicy factor. Nice. So I thought I would just take the inside seeds and use that in my um, vinaigrette with the lamb. And that's the, that's a part of the tomato that people sometimes throw away. Right, so you're saying I'm slumming for garbage, and I agree. It's the best part. Nose to tail cooking right there. Yes, definitely. Look at that double, oh, Chris going for the double chops. You gonna get those things cooked through? Ah, uh, we'll see. I guess we'll see, you got a rub on there? No, yeah, a little bit, just uh, mustard powder, paprika, aggressive salt pepper. Ted again with the hard job, walking around and just yapping, huh? Ooh. The grill got really, really hot, so I started getting a little flame. I turned it off. All I'm trying to do is get a nice sear. I want that fat to start melting and get a nice crispiness on it. Then I'm gonna finish them off in the oven. There we go, we're gonna go in here for a minute. How's it going, Chris? Good. I'm about to plate. <sighs> are the lamb bones. All right, judges, the clock tolls for thee this time. Ten, nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, five, four, three, two, one. Time's up, folks. Please step back. Nice job. All right, Mark, what do you have here? So I made a little grilled romaine. I made a caponata and some... Uh... Grilled lamb chops, a little scottadito, we would call them in Italian. Scotta, you keep saying all these Italian things. And I well, don't know what scottadito that is. means literally to burn the fingers. And when you have a lamb chop, they call them scottadito because you put them and you burn your fingers when you pick up the lamb chop and you eat them with your fingers. Oh, I thought you were making an excuse for how, why you burn the lamb chop. <sighs> what do you What do you think? My name's Scott Conan. <laughs> 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 That's very funny. I got him. <laughs> so what I did was I took the apple spice cake and I put it into the caponata. Would you like yes. to dig in? Oh, Jesus. Mm, I love this romaine. I love the combination of the apple spice cake with the eggplant. <laughs> it actually worked really well. I was... That's delicious. And this is so nicely charred. Delicious. All right, Chef Alex, what do we have? So I made um, a lamb medallions with um, roasted eggplant with paprika and uh, lamb bones milanese. What a great example of taking it off the bone, doing two different things with the lamb. This is fantastic. And then you have mint julep spice cake vinaigrette. You know, some people look at anchovy and like, I'm not eating that, there's anchovies in it. But here, you don't you don't really know there's anchovies. There's, they're just there to help it along. It's crunchy, it's salty, it's flavorful, it's meaty. It's, wow. That is delicious. Chris, what do you got? This looks beautiful. OK, I just kind of went very classic. I just did a, a, a pan roasted rack of lamb. I'd rub the lamb with mustard, paprika, olive oil, lots of salt and pepper. But then I focused most of my energies really on, on a, a salad. There's tomatoes. There's croutons made out of the apple spice bread. Um, and then the eggplant, by the way, is underneath. I love the way the lamb, the, how the lamb is cooked. It looks like Sunday prime rib. And Chris, I also have to commend you on the little pop of the, uh, the croutons. Mm -hmm. Three incredible takes on Rack of Lamb. Thank you so much, chefs. Loved it. Thank you. Knew I would. Our judges love to cook these after-hours rounds, so we let them, then we post them at foodnetwork.com slash chopped.